I've been searching on the internet for months now to find a roof rack that fits on the first gen Tacoma extra cap that doesn't require you to drill holes into the roof. I couldn't find one except for this one right here. This is by a company called uh, Eno or Inu, and they make a roof rack that doesn't have you drilling holes into the roof like the Prince rack does. And that works out because this is a pretty nice first gen. It's in good shape and I really feel bad drilling holes in it. So with this, I don't have to. With the sunroof on this truck, with like the Prince rack, it sits so low that I basically wouldn't be able to use the uh, sunroof at all. Whereas with this rack, should still give me enough room, should still be able to do it. Let's get this thing installed, I'm so excited. So with the first gen Tacoma Extra Cab, you obviously only have two doors, one on each side. So you don't have the second door frame like you would on the four door that you could put the roof rack uh, latches onto. So what this does is it basically, it utilizes the front door to put the two latches on, but then it has an extension that runs to the rear of the roof. And what that looks like is something like this. And as you can see, it's got the little feet for the attaching to the roof right there and right there in the middle. And then these long supports here that run to the back extend this rear one, which does not actually attach to a door. It just sits on top of the roof, but it's attached to these middle racks. So anyways, it's kind of cool how they managed to do this and uh, make a workaround for the first gen because I've seen some guys that do like Thule or Yakima setups, but all they get is the two front little clamps right on the door. And so your roof rack is really slim. It's only about that far apart instead of having the other one way back here to extend the roof rack. So pretty cool. Okay, so to put this thing on, I'm gonna just figure this out. I probably have to open both the front doors, make this a little easier. Just gotta hop up here. Now, I'm not really sure how far forward this is supposed to sit yet. I'm gonna figure this out on the fly. And that just goes right over the, uh, the rubber trim, I suppose. Okay, now I do see an issue. So to, to move the bar here, you have to pull this bolt down. Just, it's really kind of a pain. And then you can slide this mount along this bar to adjust it. So there's gonna be a lot of adjusting going on here until I figure this out. Okay, so this is still loose up front here. I just wanna kind of figure this out first. So this has two hooks on the back that latch into each of these. And then this guy is just gonna sit on the door like the front one, which, how does that work? All right, bear with me. Okay, so I've got it set, I think, where I want it. I'm not sure exactly how this goes together or if that just stays like that, but it comes with this little three Newton meter torque wrench that you're supposed to torque these down with. There we go. So this back one, because it doesn't have a lock, it's got four locks that goes on the front too. It's got this little plastic cover, so this bolt just goes through in there. And then it's got these little ridges that just kind of hold it in place up top, I believe. So it should just kind of sit on there like that. And it's just a little, little cover for it. Can't remember. Oh, I put this on upside down. Yeah, whoops. So I guess we'll put this on here. There we go, you just twist it a little bit and now that's on there. This I'm gonna have to fix. Now that's locked and that's locked. And now I see that this, this is not on there very well, but I guess that's how that works. All right, boys and girls, the roof rack's on. And it's, it's really, really snug. I was a little skeptical at first about the rear not having a connection point, but you can rock the whole truck with it. That should do just fine. That's pretty cool. Not to mention, I didn't have to drill any holes. And what I'm most stoked about, honestly, is that I hated how the camper shell was taller than the cab of the truck. It really just visually, it, it like screwed with me. 
So now having the roof rack up there, it kind of elevates the cab a little bit and makes it a little more even with the top of the camper shell, which I absolutely love. I think that looks way better. And so I'm thinking, one, I'm gonna finally put my solar panel up top here. That way I don't have to pull it out every time I wanna charge it. So it'll always be charging on the roof. Let's check and see if the sunroof hits. Nope, sunroof still works and it'll definitely clear the rails. So if I put the solar panel up here, I'll have about an inch of space in between the top of this popped and the solar panel. So that's awesome. And then what do you guys think? Should I add a fairing here across the front? I haven't driven it yet, so I don't know what the wind noise is gonna be like, but oh, I'm thinking that could be cool is make a little DIY fairing out of maybe some like ABS plastic and uh, figure out a way to mount that. Cause I think they do make one, but it's like 80 bucks and I already spent way too much money on this roof rack. So if we can DIY a little fairing, could be cool. Let me know down in the comments what you guys think about the roof rack. Pretty stoked on it. Not to mention I didn't have to drill any holes. I'm just beyond excited about that part of it. This is how it looks from the side. Not too obstructive. You know, it looks a little more utility on top of the truck. Makes it look a little less grandpa-ish and a little more camper or overlander, if you will, I guess. But that's awesome, man. I'm so freaking stoked on it. Such a clean install. Hopefully there's not a ton of wind noise, but um, yeah, this is sick. This is my 50 watt Renogy solar panel. It's I've had it for years now, and I've always set it up with this PVC stand, and I would just face it towards the sun and angle it however I wanted, but today it's changing it up. It's going on the roof now. Uh, trying to remember how I got this thing on and off. Holy moly. Like that, there we go. Make a new use for that PVC. Wow, I totally, I ran over this thing a couple times, uh, which is kind of funny because I forget that I have it out there. So when I in reverse into the driveway, um, and I have to back out to get out and I forget this thing's there. Yeah, it's ran over it a couple times, just a little bit, but it's okay. This thing's gonna go on the roof. My thought is this thing's already got some holes on it around the perimeter. So I'm gonna drill holes on this side of the aluminum. That way I can wrap a zip tie around it and adhere it to the roof rack using one, two, three, four, five, six zip ties. I think maybe not the most ideal, but it should do the trick. Well, that's good. Here's how the roof rack turned out. Pretty darn happy with it. Again, just so stoked to not be drilling holes in the roof and being able to achieve this. And uh, as you can see, we've got the uh, solar panel just zip tied with six zip ties front and back on the roof rack and I think it'll work. And uh, oh, if I didn't show you guys, I got a dash carpet for the truck. Yeah, a little, little tip or not tip, but a little uh, Easter egg for you there. And uh, yeah, this roof rack, Pretty freaking stoked with it, man. Look at this thing. And if we look right in here, it's charging, so that's good. Now I don't have to keep it right here anymore. I used to just lay it down on its side right here and then pull it out as needed. But uh, now it frees up some space in the camper. I just ran the cables from the charge controller up through this wooden section here. And then for now, it's just running out the window and I just have it slightly open, so hopefully no rain gets in. But eventually, I think what I'll do is do the um, bicycle tire inner tube method, where you inflate an inner tube sandwiched in between the cab and the camper shell, and then I'm gonna run the cables through that, and that should create a watertight edge or a seal through it. This thing was a pretty penny, but uh, it's the only one I've seen for the first gen that doesn't require drilling, so I figured it was worth it. And I only found it on one store, which was like eTrailer.com. 
So I wasn't sure if they were gonna even keep these in stock or make these anymore. So I didn't wanna miss out on the opportunity. Here it is, if you guys want one. I'll throw the uh, parts list of what I ordered up there on the screen. So uh, think about getting yours if you want and uh, use this video, hope it helps to install it. But um, thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate you all. Keep elevating, adios.